Hey there everybody, it's Mark Crilly. I'm back with another How to Draw video. Today I'm going to be doing the same drawing five times, but I'm going to use a different type of line uh, to do each of the drawings. That way we can compare different types of line quality and see how they affect the final result. Let's not waste any time, let's go ahead and get into it. Okay, so I'm coming in here with my trusty black Prismacolor, which is really just a, a black uh, colored pencil. And uh, I'll tell you that this uh, character that I'm drawing is the uh, one of the two main characters in my upcoming uh, graphic novel called My Last Summer with Cass. So you're going to be seeing this character, her name is Megan, uh, drawn in different ways. I'm using uh, the black colored pencil for this first version. The other ones I'm going to be using ink, I think. Um, but what I want you to notice about the way that I'm doing these lines is the speed with which uh, I am executing each one of these lines. Watch how quickly some of these lines are drawn. And, you know, I've talked about this uh, over the years, that uh, the, the speed with which you do a line affects the, the appearance of that line. Mainly, it's the, if you draw a line really quickly, you end up with a super smooth uh, line quality. The, uh, the, the thing that's happening is that because you're not moving your uh, hands really slowly across the page, uh, that the uh, sort of wiggling of your uh, hand does not affect the line quality. Now you can see that I'm sort of uh, sometimes slowing down a little bit when I need precision. Uh, and that really is accurate to my uh, approach to uh, drawing this character in the book. Sometimes the lines are done, done quite quickly, sometimes they are not. Now I can feel already that this pencil is starting to get a little dull, so I'm actually <laughs> going to pause a moment to uh, sharpen and give you a sense of how uh, you do need to periodically uh, sharpen the pencil to, to if you're going to use this black colored pencil approach. Um, and basically what you, uh, we're going to see is that uh, on subsequent versions of this drawing, I will be not using this same speed. Uh, there's also kind of a, a variance in uh, the width of the line. You know, as I press down, whoops, and that happens sadly with the black colored pencil. Sometimes the tip of it can snap, one of the drawbacks. Uh, of using this approach, but I'm still sort of hooked on my trusty black Prismacolor. Um, but uh, yeah, if you push down a little harder, the, the line can get thicker. Uh, when you let up on the line, and uh, just here I'll show you, let's see if I can do the, the bridge of the nose in a very light line, right? Because I'm not, I'm not pressing down very hard. Uh, whereas down here, let's say, maybe I do give it a good push. And uh, these, the, that, uh, that also will come to uh, be an, a factor in some of these other versions where I use uh, the pen, especially if you've got an ink pen that has a little bit of a give to it, you know, that when you, when you push down hard and you get the thicker line, when you let up you get the thinner line, and that is in, indeed the kind of pen that I like to use. Um, but sort of like the, for the fold of the upper eyelid, in fact I might just uh, go ahead and give this another quick sharpen to get a finer line. This one I really am not going to be pushing down very hard at all. I really want to get that sort of spider web like super thin line. And this is what line quality is all about. You know, really the video is not so much telling you, hey guys, you should draw like this or whatever, but more you should think about this. You know, you should pay attention to your line quality, whatever it is. And uh, maybe experiment if you find that you tend to be using the exact same type of line over and over again in all your different drawings. Maybe it's time to, to, to consider um, varying things, experimenting, seeing what happens when you move your pen or pencil in a different way. Now another thing that I'll mention before we move on to the next one is that you don't see me going back over these lines a second time. Um, that can have the effect of sort of deadening a line, uh, whereas if, if, if you can get away with doing just a single stroke, at least for this style, there is, um, there's a liveliness to that line that can get killed. Like I'm not going to go right on top of this one, I'm going to go next to it. Uh, so that each one of the lines pretty much was done with a single stroke of the pencil. 
Now, I'm going to go ahead and move on to the second one. You'll notice also, I haven't mentioned this, but I have not taped down the paper. Very often I, I am, you know, I, I get the paper taped down so that people watching on YouTube can see, uh, you know, without it moving around. But when it comes to inking and doing lines of any kind, I find that it's very important to use the natural pivot point. Uh, of my wrist. Um, I've been talking about this for years in my videos, but just in case you haven't seen any of those videos before, uh, I'm moving, the reason I'm spinning the page around is to get the natural pivot point of my wrist uh, uh, working in my favor. Now, I talked about the speed of the line with this one and how quickly I was doing these lines. With this one, to give us some contrast, this line quality is going to be about keeping it slow and controlled. And to be honest, I would not normally work this way. But I want you to see the difference in line quality. Now, having changed from a pencil to a pen, that in itself results in a different type of line. And, you know, I talked about the, the level of smoothness and that uh, when you slow uh, your pencil down that there's, there can be this sort of, um, the liveliness of the line goes away. And it's a little hard to describe because you don't suddenly see um, my line getting really shaky. Although there are styles in which artists will deliberately try to do a, a shaky line. But what I'm really going for with this version is something that resembles, to my eyes anyway, uh, animated cartoons, like hand-drawn, old-fashioned Disney uh, animated cartoons or Japanese anime when it was done by hand, uh, that there was a, a type of approach there in which the lines were very clean and the lines connect almost always all the way to the next line. You know what I mean? I'm not, I'm not leaving gaps. See how all of these lines connect and there's, there's sort of like a, almost like a stained glass <laughs> kind of quality where there, there's no sort of breathing gaps between the lines. If you go back to this one you can see I don't close in all of those lines and you end up with uh, quite a different look when you start getting super controlled like this and uh, combining that, the sort of slowness of the, of the line, with this tendency to close everything in. And there is something, I think, almost psychologically that happens to the, when the viewer sees this type of line quality, that, um, you know, th there's this airtight kind of quality to it. And depending on on what you're going for. You may want your drawings to have this kind of super clean, super controlled look. But in a way this video is all about showing you that you don't have to have just one style of line quality. That you can change your line quality from one project to the next. Or that indeed your style may involve blending uh, several of these drawing approaches into a single uh, type of drawing so that you're not uh, having to pick and choose, oh, I only do loose lines really quickly or I only do these sort of super tight lines. I'm a little nervous about adding too much detail to the nose actually and so I'm actually I'm going to stop right there and just leave the nose like that. Um, I'm just a little nervous but about you know, the nose, if you draw, add too many, one line too many, and you can completely ruin a drawing of the nose. I'm sure many of you have had that experience. I know I have. So uh, anyway, yeah, just going to continue on with this and, and keep doing these very, it's not super slow, but definitely not as fast as I was doing before. And as I said, closing everything in. And at the end, you know, we're going to have five different versions of this, essentially the same drawing uh, that we can compare and uh, I don't mean for one of them to be declared the winner <laughs> as superior to the other or whatever but even right now you can start to compare 
uh, how much line quality affects the final look of a drawing. Well, I'm going to move on to this next one. I hadn't intended to just do this all real time, but why not? I'm going to move on now uh, to uh, a style in which instead of closing in all the lines, as we did here, I am really going to do a super disconnected approach where the lines almost never touch each other or only very rarely touch each other. And this is, you know, attempting a style in which the white of the page is constantly showing through. And, um, you know, art, te art teachers tend to talk about letting something breathe. You know, when if you let the white of the page show through, the, the air, the the drawing is being allowed to breathe, rather than uh, being having everything closed in so tightly as I had done before. So you can see already. Um, I think the speed of the lines is coming into play a little bit, but uh, basically I'm just trying to go for a lighter touch, and I'm deliberately allowing gaps to form so that the lines don't touch one another. Now, some of you watching this video might say, hey, I like that look. Maybe I'll try doing drawings that where the lines don't all connect. Uh, and I would love that. If some of, you know, if this gives you guys some ideas for a type of uh, drawing style that you would like to take on. But again, I think for people who, you know, get serious about doing lots of different projects, they may create different line drawing approaches that they can carry through them throughout their career and almost like a toolbox of different types of um, line work that you can pick and choose from. Say, well, this project maybe requires that sort of uh, line, you know, the, the super open flowing airy style like I'm using right now. And you may, you know, have an, a different project that comes along where you're like, oh no, it's, it's definitely we want to use this more controlled, clean sort of um, cell animation type of a look. So, and I think instead of doing the whole rest of this live, I'm going to speed through this so as to keep the video a little bit shorter. So I'm going to time lapse, complete this on uh, to the finish, and then we'll move on to the uh, fourth uh, version. All right, so there you see uh, my approach, even in terms of doing the pupils or the irises, instead of darkening it all in, I'm, I just did a few lines there. Uh, again, almost a sort of hyper-exaggerated approach of, of letting it breathe, you know, letting the air, or the air, the page, the white of the page show through uh, almost for the entire drawing. Um, and I kind of like this look, to be honest. It makes me wonder if I shouldn't try it for one of my future projects. But let's move on to this next one, and this one's going to be kind of fun. Uh, this is going to be uh, what I would call the straight line approach. And uh, what I'm going to be doing this time is trying to avoid curves, trying to avoid any obvious curves. And maybe in terms of uh, whether all the lines connect with one another or not, I will do a sort of blend of these different styles where the, the white of the page can sometimes show through, uh, but very often the um, lines do connect, so, so as to give you an example. But notice that I'm trying, even when I come to parts of the drawing that would normally be rounded, I'm actually trying my best to always use straight or semi-straight lines. And uh, it'll be interesting when we're done with it to compare and see what happens when you almost force yourself never to do a curved line. And as you might imagine, it, 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 has, it starts to look mechanical almost, but it can be a nice look. Again, I don't think I've ever used this for one of my published uh, projects, but I have admired it in other people's drawings, this, uh, this sort of boxy line quality, um, 
that really definitely gives your drawing a different kind of a look. And especially, you know, when we, you would normally think of drawing a, a, like a very feminine face with curved lines, it becomes an interesting challenge to sort of push yourself and say, no, I'm not going to do any curved lines with this one. It's all going to be fairly straight lines to one degree or another. So, you know, I'm showing you five different uh, approaches, but there's just going to be th thousands of different types of lines that you could uh, use for this exact same drawing. Uh, I just happened to choose uh, five for this video, but um, again, I hope that this gets people thinking, oh wow, I don't have to do all my lines in a certain way. I could start experimenting and trying uh, different approaches. But I have to, with this one, I really have to sort of keep reminding myself, no curved lines, Krilly. No curved lines. Keep it straight. And it really does result in a, a different kind of a look. I think I will go ahead and finish this one up in time lapse, and then we'll be back with the fifth and final version. One interesting thing that happens with this approach, I find, at least the way I, when I try to do these straight lines with an ink pen, the, sometimes you end up with the sort of, the ink uh, pools up at the end of each line. You almost get these little dots that are at the end of each line. I don't know if you can see that, and it, it does result in an interesting look that uh, I'm not necessarily going for, but it just kind of happens. And now we come to the uh, last one, and I'm actually going to switch from this pen, which is a 08, a fairly thick one, um, to a 05 Micron Pigma is the company. Sakura. I always get confused because there's so many different <laughs> names for this company. It's Pigma. It's Sakura. It's Micron. One of them <laughs> will work for you when you go to the store and try to find these things. But I'm going to use a type of line quality that I pretty much would never use, and I think a lot of art teachers try to stop you from using. Uh, and that is this sort of scratchy style where, you know, instead of trying to do smooth lines, um, you sort of build up lines by way of repeated hatch marks, almost. And um, I've seen this kind of thing used to nice effect in certain types of children's book illustration. Um, and the fact is, you know, regardless of what a, an art teacher says to you about, oh, you shouldn't do the lines that way or whatever, the truth is, in the end, everyone comes up with their own way of doing lines, and that's part of what it means to be an artist, finding your own way of doing things. Um, so, again, this is not typically how I would do, you know, going over and over again in the same area and sort of, it gets this sort of hairy, furry kind of quality, you know, of the, when you, when you do, when you repeatedly go again and again in the same area with several different lines instead of just one or two smoother lines. Uh, but again, I think almost psychologically the viewer gets a different kind of a feeling from this drawing, that, that sort of her, uh, hairy, sketchy quality. It might be useful, you know, I was thinking like if you had a flashback, let's say, you're, you're doing a, a comic book or a graphic novel and you need, to, you need a different style for the flashbacks when someone remembers something from childhood or whatever, just in that one section you could switch to this sort of hairy line approach where uh, everything is very scratchy and cross-hatchy looking. Um, and that would help to convey to the viewer, oh, we've entered a different time period, oh, we've gone back in time or whatever. It has, to me it has a sort of a nostalgic, old-fashioned look. But again, I think rather than uh, narrating every last step of this, I will uh, use time-lapse to finish this off, and then I think we should go ahead and pull back to compare all of the different versions and and see how just how different these five different drawings ended up looking. Okay, so there you see the final look, and I gotta say it's quite relaxing to use this approach because you just don't have to worry too much about the beauty of any individual line. Sometimes with some of these other ones you're, you get a little nervous like you know, especially if you have to do the lines quickly. 
you get a little nervous about making sure that it's both smooth and accurate. Whereas with this, you you can pretty much relax and say, oh, well, I'm building it all up in, with scratchy lines anyway. Um, so yeah, for those of you who are worried about your uh, steadiness of hand, this type of inking approach uh, or line quality might work for you. Well, let's go ahead and zoom across and compare just uh, close up the different approaches. You can already see how different they are, but let's pull the camera back so that we can see all five of them at once. All right, well there you go. You can see how drastically different the five drawings look uh, depending on the type of line quality that you choose. And I hope this gave you some inspiration for your own work trying out, experimenting with different ways of putting lines on the page. But before I wrap things up, I do want to say thank you to anyone who has supported me by getting any of my books like The Two Pencil Method, my book that shows you how to draw with just two fairly ordinary pencils, The Drawing Lesson, a graphic novel that teaches you how to draw, and of course my Mastering Manga series 1, 2, and 3. Always super, super grateful to anyone who chooses to support me by getting any of those books. And uh, remember, next March we're finally going to meet Megan in her own story. Uh, more than 250 pages long, this graphic novel. I'm very excited to unleash it upon the world. But let's go ahead and lay down this pen for now. I want to thank you all for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. And I'll be back with another one real soon.